Uh, thanks everybody for uh, for tuning in today. We're going to talk about a beams feature uh, that is in Onshape. So we, we're used to seeing all the regular features of extrudes and chamfers and rounds and things like that. There's also a beam feature, but out of the box, this isn't there. So first of all, how do you get it there? Um, I'm going to call up another user that doesn't have it. There's usually just a little plus sign here. So you just select on this. And you just say, let's search for beams. Comes back, here's the beam feature that I want. I can just select on it. Say add this and it says custom feature beams was added to your toolbar. So if we close this out, you notice now there's a little down arrow. When I select on that, there is beams. And now I can go through here and pick the type of beam that I want. And uh, that's really how you add it to your toolbar. And there's lots of other um, capabilities that we can add in here, not just beams, but other things that people have written. So it's all done in feature script, which everybody has access to. There've been a lot of people that have created kind of custom feature scripts, which is exactly what the beams uh, feature script is. And um, if you want to open up that feature script and customize it and modify it, you can certainly do that if you wanna write one of your own you can do that as well. But uh, some of them have already been pre-created and we can just go and search for them and add those to our toolbar as we saw here. So now that we have covered that, let's talk a little bit about how we can approach uh, using this particular tool. So beams will give us a lot of, a huge library of different types and sizes of beams, you know, I beams, channels, uh, rectangular beams, things like that. And uh, what we really need is sort of like a, a representation to kind of lay those on. And uh, so what I've done here is I've kind of created a series of sketches. We can kind of see this is all 2D. And I've just created a sketch you know, on the top, got some uh, legs here. So I'm kind of building a skeleton of curves and I can kind of put the beams then on each one of these curves. Another way of doing this as well, I'm gonna turn on something here, is I could have made a block here and then I can just put a beam along this edge and along the edge up here and kind of just pick the different edges where I want the different types of beams to be. And then I could maybe sketch on the top and add the things that I had here and maybe another sketch in the middle. So there's lots of different ways of tackling it, but basically whether you're picking edges of solids or picking um, you know, stick figures or wireframe, basically how I would think of it, um, it'll work fine for that. So that's kind of the first approach is kind of build up a, an idea of what you want. Uh, then let's kind of go in here. Let's go into beams and take a look at this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'll come down here and let's pick a, a rectangular beam. And we'll pick the size. I'll come down here and say maybe 120 by 80. And I can just start to pick where I want it to be. So I could pick one here. Um, and it, you notice that this way it's kind of Let's pick a couple other ones here. They're kind of set this way. If I want to rotate those, I could say, let's rotate them maybe 90 degrees. So now they're set this way. And that's maybe a more preferable way. And then I can continue picking the different edges that I have here. Now that I've created the first structure here, you'll notice, by the way, that it goes the full length of the curve or the edge that we have of a solid if we're using that. And what we have to do now is kind of tidy up the corners. So there's a real nice application in here, a modifier, where we can merge them together. In this case, um, <clears throat> maybe what we want to do is just say miter all. We can, we'll, we'll do the trimming in a minute, but we'll say let's miter the corners. So it miters all of the corners at 45 degrees. We can see that. So now I've created my first sets of beams. We'll kind of turn on, let's keep our little sketch up here just so we can use that. Um, next, let's go in. I'm going to continue using the same type of beams, but we're going to say, let's put one here and let's put one there. So now we've got some other ones here. And again, because they extend the full length, you notice that there's an overlap here. So this is where we would go in and we use the trim option. And so I could say, let's trim it to this face right here. And you notice that they, these two get trimmed off. And then I'll come over here and say, let's trim it to the face right there. And then this one and that one get turned off. So really easy to kind of 
put these beams up really, really quickly and then kind of get the corners the way uh, that we want. I'm going to continue on, maybe adding some more. Let's let's stick with the rectangular beams here, but we'll change the size a little bit, make some a little bit smaller. We'll say something like this. And again, in this case, we'll say let's put a beam in here, one over there, one in the back, and then one maybe along this edge. So we're kind of building up a frame structure here. And again, I'm going to use the trim capabilities and just say let's trim it off to this face and this face and then maybe you know the one back here and the one over here and I can continue on but you kind of get the gist of what I'm doing but what we've done here then is we've come in you notice that this is all trimmed off here both these are all trimmed the way that we want and so we've got a good start now what I'm doing here is I'm doing this all in a part studio. And I'll say right up front, this is not the recommended way of doing this. Um, and we'll talk about why that is the case. But what I want to do is kind of bring up a lot of geometry really quickly up on the screen and kind of highlight some of the capabilities that we have here using this uh, beams feature. So let's go in, let's continue on with this. Let's grab something a little bit different. Um, let's say, let's grab kind of an I-beam maybe 120, and we'll put one maybe here, there, and then across the middle here. So now I've got three of those. And again, the same type of thing that we would do that we've been doing is we'll say, let's do a trim. We'll trim these two back to this face and trim these two back to this face. So now those are all trimmed off. Um, when we have two beams like this, I-beams, and you notice how they're kind of, we would really want to kind of cut this out a little bit differently, not just a straight cut necessarily for, for welding purposes and things like that. So what I'm going to do is just old school Boolean type things. All I'm going to say is this is our, our tool. And we're going to say we're going to do a subtract. The target is this guy. And I'm going to say keep the tool, keep the original. So now we've got that all cut off that's exactly inside. And then we just do the same thing on the other side. So this is our tool. We subtract from him, and then keep the original. So now we've got some things set up here. And you notice it's really easy. We're just picking kind of edges and corners and picking some lines and creating that. Here's a plate. So this is just a big, um, basically just a big uh, surface that I've created here. And I'm going to take this one and uh, I'm just going to make a plate just by extruding it. So I could say, let's extrude it, let's extrude it up. And we'll say maybe, uh, let's say 50. So really what I want it to do, since it's in halfway up here, I'm going to extrude it up here. And then also just add a second direction and we'll flip that and say, let's maybe make that one 40. So we're we're basically building a, a 10 millimeter plate. You can see right on top here, on top of our beams that we placed. And then again, we can do the same over here. Um, you notice I have another couple of surfaces that I've created, and I can just pick both of those and do the same thing. Right. So I'm just when I'm doing plates, it's just sometimes easier just to do it this way, especially if they aren't. You know, I didn't know how big a beam I was going to use here, but now I can kind of adjust by using different extrudes to kind of organize this a little bit. So this one, in the particular case, we'll say let's go up, uh, I don't know, 75 millimeters. Oh. And uh, maybe make the second direction. Go up maybe just like, and we'll make this one maybe a little bit different thickness. So maybe like a 15 millimeter thickness, a little thicker plate. Oh, didn't want to pick that edge. Let's grab this guy again, extrude him. I'll say 75 and 60.
Okay, so now we've got our plate sitting up on top of here. You notice that it made them the same color as that one. So what it did is since it was touching, it said maybe we want to add it. We do want him to be a separate component. So I'll say, let's make him a new plate. So now he's a, a separate component down here. You can see that that's been added. And then the next thing um, that we might want to do is kind of pattern this guy. <clears throat> so we're going to say, let's pattern this component that we've just made here and the direction maybe along this edge. And we'll give it a distance of like 600. And then maybe a second direction in this direction. Let's pick uh, that edge. And we'll say maybe 700. And make two of those. So now we've patterned this. We've got a couple of plates sitting on top. And now we can mount something on the top. So basically, just a mixture of different things using different beams, different trim techniques. Uh, creating different plates and things like that. But let's get into why you wouldn't want to do this. And and potentially you would. Maybe if you're going to create a frame structure and you really just need the frame structure, you need it to show up in a bill of material just as a single line item or something like that, then you could absolutely do this in this particular way. But if we were to put him right now, we're just in a part studio. So you notice that each individual component is a separate body. So if I were to go in to an assembly, and say, let's bring this in as an assembly. Now we have those in, and each one is an individual part. So this is a component right here, but it's really the same component as this one. It's just flipped around. So this guy is really used four times. If we go over here and take a look in our bill of material, though, we see that every single one is listed as an individual item. So that's what I mean by creating something in the part studio isn't necessarily the best way to do it. And it's not even the preferred way of doing things. Um, so what we're going to do is, is kind of work with the philosophy way on shape works. But like I said, if your only purpose in life was just to create this, and if we want to add this as a sub-assembly to a larger assembly and just have him, you know, incorporated as a single line item, you know, we could do that using this part studio way of doing things, I guess. But at some point, typically in the life of this frame structure that we see here, at some point, someone's going to need to put this together. And they're going to want to know how many of these type of beams do I need and how many of these and so on and so forth. So that's why we want to use a different approach. Um, and what we want to do is, let me call up a different version of this, is any item that is unique, we create in the part studio. So here is a part studio. And all I did is create the same beams in the same way that we did before, but I only did the ones that were unique. So you can see this is a unique beam. So is this, all of these guys, and then our, our plate. In this case, I have the plates on the bottom, but you can see that he was added here as well. So the thing is, is that now that we have the individual items like this, then when we go into the assembly, we go in and we take this one and say, I want to assemble him in, and I just flip them around and add them to this side, and then add two of them on the back side, and so on and so forth. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm using the same beam uh, multiple times. And what that does is it gives me an accurate representation in the bill of material, so that now we can see we have quantities for everything instead of a quantity of one for everything. So we have two of these and four of those and so on and so forth. So when we do get to creating a drawing. I'll pop the drawing of this. We put in our bomb. Here we can see that you know we have a, a representation of all the individual components. And then here we have the callouts for, you know, we have four of these types of plates and four of these vertical beams and, and, and so on. So what we're seeing is that this is really the preferred method, the technique for doing that. And again, that's the way it is with on shape in general, is the unique components or unique bodies that are um, created in the part studio are there, just the unique ones. And then we go into the assembly and uh, continue the assembly work there so that we have the, the correct quantities. And like I said, at some point in life, um, somebody's going to want to know an accurate representation of all these, how many of these types of components are there, how many of these. And so that's why we want to use the technique here that I just showed you now. So that's basically using the uh, the beams um, feature that's uh, 
out there for everyone to use. You could just add, hit the little plus sign, add it in there, and it will work as easily um, as it did here for me. So that kind of brings a, an end to our presentation here today. It was a little bit shorter than most of them we do, but uh, hopefully we got some, uh, some good use and some uh, good ideas from this, and uh, we look forward to talking to you uh, at a future event.